Hello, I'm Dennis. I was asked to present a lecture on transitioning from APTA to BP. Uh, a little about myself. I competed a lot in both formats and did relatively well at both. Um, and actually really enjoyed doing both and think that there's a lot of synergies between the two. Uh, so yeah, this is going to be like half pitched and then also like on why you should do BP and then also half kind of explaining a bit about the differences between the two and, uh, you know, helping people who might have never done BP make it seem more approachable uh, and give some tips on, you know, things to look out for when making that transition. So uh, three things will be covered in today's lecture. The first is the pitch. The second is talking a bit about the differences between BP and APTA. Then finally about the skills. Uh, importantly, I'm not going to go into like the specific like rules of BP, like the speech times and all that, I'm going to assume <clears throat> that, you know, you have already like a general familiarity with like how the round breaks down. This is going to be more about kind of the uh, differences and like norms and strategy and things like that. So uh, first, uh, why should you do BP? Uh, I think there's a couple of reasons. The first is I think it like, let's say you, primarily care about APTA, you know, BP is something you might do just because, like, you have, like, a free weekend, uh, and, you know, it's online or something, um, so you're like, maybe, maybe I'll try it, uh, but you, you still want to focus on APTA. Even then, I think that doing BP makes you better at APTA, and I have these images here of, like, Michael Phelps doing boxing or Jamal Murray, uh, doing MMA, because I, I want to stress that, like, you know, athletes and other sports at the top levels engage in cross-training. They do other sports that stress other skills that are complementary with their primary sport. And I think BP uh, just like is a very natural fit for people who very much want to get better at APTA. Uh, it stresses skills that sometimes uh, are useful in APTA, but just doing rounds might not necessarily uh, work on. So you can almost think of it as a drill uh, things that I think it gets you better at are round vision, uh, just getting better at doing motions APTA, given that I think an increasing number of tournaments are becoming motions. And then finally, just changing your argumentation to have a bit more of like a lay appeal to be a bit more intuitive. Uh, I know, you know, a lot of times people feel like uh, a judge screwed them because they didn't understand an argument or maybe the judge isn't particularly technical and your style is a much more technical APTA style. Um, that being the case, you know, you can't change who your judge is going to be, but you can change the way that you uh, debate and adapt. And I think being able to be kind of flexible in that way uh, is very much an advantage for someone who's trying to win more of their rounds rather than just sulking and saying like, why doesn't my judge evaluate APTA rounds the exact way that I wish they would, which, you know, uh, maybe is a more comforting narrative, but is not one that is uh, conducive to getting better as a debater. Um, and I, I think this is kind of just borne out in the empirics, right? So five out of the last six team of the years uh, were teams that had at least one, but usually two people that were world's breaking BP debaters. Um, multiple of the past couple SOTIs, even in recent APTA, uh, were also people who are uh, very talented BP debaters. Um, the current SOTI, though that's still not decided, is also a very, very good BP debater. So at the very least, even if you don't buy that it is symbiotic, uh, you should at least believe that being at one does not preclude being good at the other. And that, you know, oftentimes these are people who had their start in APTA didn't do very much to change their skill and still performed quite well, right? So I, I think at the very least, it should at least make it seem less intimidating. But I actually do think that, you know, if you do uh, watch the styles of these debaters, uh, you, you can see kind of the influences that BP can have at times. And then finally, like, e even if you, you don't think that it is a useful, uh, you know, application of your time as a drill, uh, I, I think that just as an activity, uh, assuming that you're someone who does APTA because you find that activity fun, this is a similar sport that is also fun, right? Like, I, I think it is just worth trying independent of whether it makes you better at the activity, just as doing something else, right? So if you were someone who plays chess, 
uh, it, it could be useful to play checkers, not because, well, maybe not checkers, but like, uh, I don't know, like Civ Five or something. Not, not because it makes you better at chess, but just because uh, you are someone who enjoys the kind of, you know, uh, critical thinking, problem solving skills that debate invites. And this is just another avenue upon which you can exercise those skills, right? It's just another fun, fun sport. If you like strategy games, it's just another strategy game for you to try. So uh, some common misconceptions that you might have that will prevent, that make you think, you know, maybe, maybe this isn't the activity for me uh, are things like, you know, there, some people say BP is just a very rhetorical and stylistic activity. It isn't particularly technical. Uh, I think that has actually uh, historically not really been true if you ask people who have really done both. Uh, and especially lately, it has become less true if you watch any modern BP round, especially ones that were online post COVID, you can see that the activity has actually become considerably uh, more technical than before and is much less flowery if that's your concern. Though I, I think style still definitely does matter. Um, and then the second is in terms of the kind of argumentation, uh, I, I think for the most part, there is a lot of overlap here in that Arguments that are well constructed, persuasive, hard to beat, and apta uh, are also likely going to be uh, have those same characteristics in BP. Um, so, you know, my, my advice for people who are starting out is to not overcorrect, right? If you are a uh, competent apta debater who makes good arguments, I, I would just start by making arguments that do feel familiar and strong to you. And then, you know, over time, as you take feedback, you can learn where you might need to slightly adjust. But uh, I, I think something that I often see people fall into is to just like go way too far and then actually just not really do either uh, speech particularly well. So um, yeah, just if you have done a fair amount of APTA up until this point, you are, I think, likely much further along on your like journey to BP, then you might think you are. So uh, some major differences between the two that I think are useful to know. The first is how the activity is judged. So in APTA, and I, I looked around for this, there, there's no like rule book. Like I looked all over the APTA website. Uh, the, and, and I think this is kind of like borne out by the fact that we have like a and positive paradigms, right? There's like the paradigm project on the forum. And if you read these paradigms, the ways that people choose to interpret uh, the rules of how APTA should be evaluated can vary greatly, right? Things like the extent to which you allow for new applications of arguments in PMR, whether that's new or not, or weighing, uh, how sticky defense is from the MO into the LOR, right? Like, Different judges just think differently. On questions of theory, they also think very differently. So you have to uh, compare norms when having this discussion of how judging is different. I'm going to talk about what I think kind of the median APTA judge is like, but importantly, uh, APTA, it, it can be a little uh, more variable in terms of the expectations of what you have from judges. Not to say that all judges in VP are perfect or the same, but at least there is a kind of standard, and I'll get into that later, that they are trying to approach. But going back to APTA, I think generally people kind of hold the idea that APTA is tabula rasa, uh, which is some debate jargon that just says like, uh, it should minimize judge intervention as much as possible even to the point of uh, not intervening against arguments that seem uh, particularly unintuitive beyond the realm of reasonability. Uh, just like you should just take what the debaters say and is written on your paper as gospel and that is how you should evaluate it. I think that is kind of a, a very general summation of the uh, a, a core norm of that, right? Minimizing judge intervention. Uh, BP, on the other hand, uh, has a, a pretty codified judge manual that will change slightly over time or be clarified in some aspects. But for the most part, there is kind of a very clear and thorough discussion of how the activity is supposed to be evaluated. Uh, and then secondarily, I think the main difference is that as opposed to tabula rasa, um, judges in BP uh, by virtue of the fact that there is, you know, 
no rebuttal speech and that you know arguments from like like OG doesn't get a chance to respond to CO uh, judges are more invited to consider how arguments interact beyond just how uh, you know you claim they do whereas in APTA because both teams get to just uh, engage with each other completely uh, and there's no other you know uh, need for the judge to kind of step in there uh, the judge just uh, can maybe be a little less uh, interventionist and turn their brain off a bit that's one thing the second is just kind of uh, there is a standard of reasonability that is applied to arguments so the burdens of proof are very different here, where just because you say, you know, the sky is green, that does not necessarily mean the judge has to believe the sky is green, even if the other team doesn't say, actually, the sky is blue, right? Um, so that, that here's a good example that I think highlights that difference. So let's say there's the same motion in either format. This house supports the remilitarization of Japan. Uh, one team makes the argument, China views a militarized Japan as a threat, and this means that there is a higher chance that nuclear war will happen. Let's say that on both formats, this argument is dropped and not responded to. How should the judge evaluate this argument? I think many people would say that in APTA, uh, you should just evaluate it as it's given. So because it is dropped and there is no response, you evaluate the impact at the scale of the claim that is made, which is that nuclear war will happen. Uh, even if the team doesn't give reasons or links to walk you through the story of how like you know uh increasing diplomatic tension leads to an increased chance of flashpoint conflict leads to you know some kind of increased chance that nuclear war will uh seem likely they just kind of intuition pump the idea that you know when you view something as a threat and your nuclear power uh you're more likely to use a nuclear weapon right like that's just the thing that's me um, in BP, it, it would be evaluated pretty differently, right? You don't evaluate the impact at the scale of the claim. You evaluate the impact at the scale of the strength of the warrant underlying the claim, uh, which in this case, that sentence there is barely even a sentence, barely even a warrant, right? Like maybe there's an implied warrant, but at most you could generously credit like absent more warranting and filling in the links that there is an increased diplomatic tension. Uh, and that's still something you can credit them and presumably in other parts of their speech, they might have weighed why increased diplomatic tensions are bad. Um, but that's probably the most that I think your median VP judge would be willing to credit the argument as it's presented here in the slide, right? Not to suggest that you couldn't make this argument such that it would be credited the same in both formats, but the extent to which you would have to prove the argument to do so uh, in APTA would almost be redundant, right? That would be time that you could spend on other arguments, presumably, unless you're worried about the other team beating it, in which case, like, maybe it makes sense to flush it out more. But for the most part, you know, you just only have to overcome the extent to which the other team can pick up that you said this and respond to it. Uh, you don't have to worry about the judge maybe thinking that you haven't explained it enough. Whereas in BP, um, you have to consider, like, have I done this to the point where the judge thinks that I have feasibly proven the impact that I'm claiming is actually an impact that I have proved happens through sufficient warranting rather than just saying impact happens. Um, second major difference then uh, is the extent to which theory affects the round. Theory meaning like just debating about debate. So uh, APTA definitely has a lot more theory debate in it, right? Just by virtue of being case debate, sometimes cases are unfair and then that leads to tight calls happening where you just say you know that case is unfair drop the other team right um but aside from tight calls i think apta has had a you know a growing amount of other kind of pre-fiat argumentation what i mean by that is argumentation that is not germane to the motion or the round right so like after the motion happens arguments about what happens in like the debate world we're talking about. These are arguments that happen outside of the debate world. So for example, arguments like the other team did not content warn something and therefore they should lose are pre-fiat because they are not arguments about what happens in the debate world and things you should consider there in the hypothetical world we're talking about. They're arguments about in this world that we live in outside of the debate, uh, you know, you should still consider uh, the impacts of those because those matter more than the 
debate hypothetical we're talking about. Now, I'm not going to talk about, you know, my thoughts on this, but what I will say is that, you know, arguments of that nature, things like Ks, which also don't really happen that much in APTA, but occasionally do, or RVIs, or even specific arguments that happen in tight calls, uh, oftentimes are not appeals to the rules, but are appeals to a kind of uh, role of the ballot argumentation outside of the rules where the judge should care less about who won the round and more about uh, implications outside the round, right? So a lot of theory argumentation exists that uh, appeals to that kind of intuition. Uh, BP, on the other hand, you know, they don't even really call it like theory, but there is some extent of, you know, just talking about the debate, but that all happens uh, one within the grounds of just kind of like what the, the manual says, right? Just the specific rules of the round and less about other implications outside of the rules of the round. Uh, and then secondarily, uh, the uh, takeaway the judge should get from these argumentations is never like, because of this, there is a norm you should set, they should drop the team, right? So for example, if you squirrel a motion in APTA, it would be very reasonable for me as the other team to say, they squirreled the motion, uh, novice debaters can't engage with this and they'll lose. So you shouldn't just uh, interpret the motion in a way that's fair to make the round happen. You should drop gov because the harm of unretaining novices when you cheat like this is bad. That is an argument that is much more at home in APTA. Whereas in BP, if someone squirrels the motion, you just say like, Therefore, we should interpret the motion in a more reasonable way. Or if someone knifes, you just say the arguments that knifed shouldn't be considered, but not because they knifed, they're an auto fourth, right? And I think BP very much uh, time and time again makes it very clear that there are no like punitive penalties for breaking the rules, right? Like you'll often hear at the start of a BP tournament, there are no auto fourths, right? So uh, violating the rules only affects your argumentation to the extent that that argumentation was uh, relevant to your case, but are not like uh, auto losses or anything. Whereas in after, I think you can make claims to suggest that something would be an auto loss. So much less theory happens in BP, much less theory will be acceptable by your judge even if you try to make those arguments. Uh, they'll just generally be less persuasive. And that, uh, as a norm, they just don't happen, which I think uh, is very much uh, probably what you should care about the most. Like, a lot of people haven't read the rules of APTA or BP, but just kind of go along the norms of what they understand. So even if you think like, oh, my interpretation of the WDC judge manual is that you should buy my pre-fiat argumentation, like your, your judges just like won't buy it, right? So I would try to steer clear of that uh, if that is something you enjoy. And if that is what you like most about debate, then maybe BP isn't for you if you like that kind of, uh, you know, winning through that kind of pre fiat argumentation, which, you know, uh, not my cup of tea, but uh, whatever floats your boat. Cool. Uh, what counts as an argument? I kind of covered this earlier in terms of judging. Um, so uh, it might be a bit redundant. Um, you need a necessary level of warranting, whereas in APTA, you can take kind of any link in a storm, right? The links have to be particularly good or persuasive and pretty thorough in P. Uh, you can't win off of something just being a blip or a pull through. So just because something isn't unresponded to, that doesn't make it true. And importantly, this applies, and I'll get to this in the strategy later, uh, if people make like eight unpersuasive claims that could be round winning if unresponded to an APTA in BP, uh, it's probably strategic to just generally characterize them as like unpersuasive and move on rather than beat them at the link level argument by argument. So you can kind of focus more on your own argumentation and weighing as opposed to rebutting every little thing that the other team says. Uh, so that's kind of like another difference. Whereas APTA is a much more line by line format where you do kind of want to make sure that you have a on the flow response to every single thing the other team said because you're worried something might be dropped. Uh, you know, those drops are much less terminal in BP. The second thing is on reasonability. So, you know, the more kind of out there the claim you're trying to make is uh, probably the more that the judge will impose some kind of burden of proof. And there's a lot of debate and different judges have different bars uh, as with all formats, you know, not a perfect like AI is evaluating the round, but 
generally, I think uh, if an argument just kind of stretches the realm of, you know, reasonability, uh, it requires too much suspension of disbelief. I think judges and BP are much less likely to take those uh, with much weight in the round. Um, and then and I, I think that the extent to which this, like, affects you as a debater is probably overblown by a lot of active debaters. Like, I, I think judges are pretty willing to take most arguments so long as they're proven. Uh, this really only applies to things that are, like, really out there, like, you know, something like the world will end if this happens, or arguments to that effect for rounds that uh, really aren't uh, about anything that could feasibly lead to the world ending. Um, I think that, that this is just a guardrail against those kinds of arguments, which I think uh, have much more of a home in APTA. And then finally, just kind of a question of topicality. Uh, a good example that always comes to mind, I think, is uh, Harvard 2018 uh, APTA. There was this motion about, you know, uh, how we should pass a constitutional amendment to abolish the Supreme Court's ability to review the constitutionality of federal laws. Um, intuitively, this seems uh, much like a, you know, criminal justice law round. Um, but I remember one team on APTA just went all in for why, uh, when you do this, then the conservative Supreme Court won't be able to stop uh, the, like, EPA or some kind of executive orders that could happen to reduce climate change. And then because climate change could kill everyone, uh, you should vote for guns. And then they won off that video. Like that, that is something that is probably not exactly where the round had in mind. Um, other examples are, uh, though I think this is also a bit of a change in norm. Um, you know, uh, there was an argument uh, or uh, Cape Town World's partial double octos. Uh, a lot of people saw as a round about you know regulation over agriculture. Uh, but one team that I saw that I think you know. In hindsight, I think maybe more judges would think one ran an argument about you know animal welfare that a lot of judges just like almost laughed out of the round and didn't consider right because it wasn't there. Uh, I, I think that trend is probably changing a bit, but you know just uh, as someone who tries to sometimes like horseshoe in like finance in rounds where finance has no place uh, as a strategy that worked really well for me in APTA, uh, something that I needed to kind of like. Um, curb against MPP more. So, you know, just arguments that, you know, have their place for the round, for the uh, round where the, the topic is relevant to those arguments um, are, are just like considered MPP. Okay, lastly, some miscellaneous norms and stylistic differences, uh, kind of two things. The first is that POIs, which do exist in APTA, actually, I've seen a lot of people be like confused when something stands up. Uh, they're, they're unlike an APTA where you are not penalized or expected, it's almost foreign to take and offer them. In BP, uh, they are uh, expected if not required. I think, you know, if, if you don't take one, you don't auto lose but uh, it is much more unstrategic to not take one. And judges are much more actively incentivized to penalize you and assume that if you did not take a POI when one was offered, that it was an absolutely devastating POI uh, and that they should find much more of your case suspicious because of that. That's the first thing. The second is that speed, uh, you know, it's a little slower than an APTA, though I think these days that is probably less true. And it is much more about speech structure than the speed itself, in that I think um, there is just a lot more signposting because of the norms around clarity, such that even though people are fast in BP, uh, they intentionally structure to their judge what they're doing and why. Whereas in APTA, I think people just kind of go like, you know, 18 arguments rapid fire down the flow. Uh, because they have a PMR that can clean it up and explain how the arguments uh, apply to each other, uh, it's much easier to just go like argument one, argument two, argument three, argument four without like really signposting. Like I've noticed that signposting is kind of a dying art in APTA. Also people have like off time roadmaps that don't exist in BP that have also made it such that the speech itself is uh, very much just like 
here are like 18 arguments I thought of. Um, we don't have that luxury in BP to kind of structure your speech off time. And also uh, you don't have the ability to like reconstruct the right after often. Your speech needs to kind of like uh, be internally coherent and structured from the jump because you don't have the ability to clean it up later. So yes, I think when people say speed is a problem in APTA, I think more what they're saying is that the structure combined with the speed makes it much harder for judges to, uh, you know, understand what's happening. So uh, when people apply that structure to BP, judges can find it kind of foreign or off-putting um, just because it, it isn't presented in the way that they understand. So slowing down, good. Uh, signposting, also really important, um, given that you don't have optical groups. The major takeaway here, though, is that BP and APTA uh, are symbiotic. I just want to stress that again, because I just gave like a bunch of reasons that they're different. Um, but I, I, I do think I want to reiterate the pitch here, which is that those differences are what make each activity useful towards getting better at the other activity. Like I do think if you're a BP debater, trying some APTA is useful. It uh, encourages line-by-line -line coverage in a world where a lot of BP debaters uh, are just kind of not really engaging with the other team beyond trying to outframe them. Uh, actually responding to the warrants beyond just giving parallel analysis is something that I think APTA teaches, right? On your feed argument generation, case building. These are all things that I think uh, APTA is uh, great at for people who want to be better at BP. And then similarly, I think if you're an APTA debater, right, the, the takeaway you should get away from this is like, as you do more BP, uh, you learn how to have better uh, round vision in your speech without needing to, you know, try to get a Hail Mary in the rebuttal. Um, oftentimes when I'm judging around, I'll explain how the round broke down, where a team was losing in the first four constructive speeches. And then I'll get asked at the end, like, is there anything I could have done in PMR to just like have won the round despite having been drastically losing the round in the first two speeches? And like, yeah, like there, I, I always give some feedback about like things they could do better. But like, what I really want to tell them that like might be too hurtful at the time is like, you, you should have been able to see this coming, right? Like, you should have been able to know the holes in your case in your PM or MG before it got to PMR. Uh, and BP uh, puts you in that kind of do or die scenario where you don't have the safety net of a PMR or an LOR to bail you out of rounds when you realize like, oh no, my argument was like not proven. I'm going to like lie about the argument I gave or like, oh no, I didn't weigh. I'm going to give new arguments that I'll just say are like way or something like that, right? Like you don't want to be in that position and BP doesn't let you be in that position. If you're opening government uh, and your PM misses something or your and DPM also doesn't, you know, uh, give argumentation to preempt a very obvious hole in your case, uh, the DLO is more than able to just absolutely eat you alive. And it's not like backloading, right? Like they just pointed out a very obvious hole that you should have filled and then just crushed you. Um, it forces you to be a lot more preemptive uh, and a lot more aware of like, what is the other team likely going to do? What are the holes in my own case that I need to fill that I don't have the luxury of filling after the fact? So I actually think that uh, it is a uh, immensely useful skill there, one. Two, uh, scaling your impacts, and that's just kind of like a catch-all for like making better arguments from the jump. So you have a back half, right, that can just point out that you did the APTA thing of just trying to make your claim the impact and argument, but you don't prove it. Uh, the back half keeps you honest, right? So that makes you just better at giving the argument such that the team behind you can't just exploit the hole in your case as well. Uh, oftentimes you can win an APTA, but with low speaks, you almost won by default because the other team just was worse than you, but that doesn't mean you were good, right? And having another team to give a better version of your case almost forces you to give the best version of your arguments uh, which is great if you want speaks, right? In a format like APTA where speaks are like incredibly important to your performance at the tournament, um, having that to keep you honest is another useful skill. And then finally, just prioritizing weighing and framing, not over-relying on rebuttal and pull-throughs um, is just another skill that BP very much encourages. So uh, what are some cross-transferable skills? What are things you can take from your APTA experience that will help you 
in BP. So let's talk, I broke this up into the two halves, opening and closing. For opening half, uh, it's pretty similar, right? Absent the rebuttal speeches to uh, an apt emotions round, right? Uh, the PM and the LO, just like one speech gives the arguments, the other speech responds to those and gives their own arguments, right? Uh, and then the second speeches are kind of similar to rebuttal speeches, right? They're unlike the member speeches, which are very line by line, uh, given that this is the last speech your team has, they're much more crystallized, much more weighing, uh, much more, you know, you're also allowed to add new arguments. Um, so it, it is much less line by line. And then also, if you remember the way that this format is judged, uh, you don't really need to respond to everything the other team says. You can just very much focus on weighing the important stuff in the round. Um, so what are some skills you can take with you here, aside from the fact that there are some similarities? One is your case writing skills for the important framing and characterization that, you know, is especially important for like a PM and an LO, but, you know, all, all speakers probably uh, can often benefit from being good at framing characterization. So uh, why I think APT is actually really good here is that um, oftentimes when people write cases, uh, what makes the case strong uh, is not the actual PMC, but is actually the background and the caveats, right? Like the reason so many APTA PMCs can just be like argument one, argument two, argument three with no like world building uh, is because that world building is already given in background. So you can kind of just like, there's already context for your arguments and why they matter, right? But uh, that's actually an advantage to you if you're an APTA debater who's written a lot of cases. All you have to remember is that unlike an APTA PMC, uh, you kind of also want to put POCs as part of your speech almost, right? Like that context that is advantageous to you uh, should be part of your speech now, given that you don't have the ability to have it off time. That's one thing. The second is, you know, uh, it's a little different in that you have fiat completely to shape the world how you want in uh, APTA, but that's like a very small change, right? All you have to do is the framing and characterization that makes your case so strong, um, just like explain why that's likely or true. Uh, and if it is intuitive framing about the world, for example, if it's like uh, intuitive what a religion's tenets are or intuitive what an actor would want, uh, th this is where the BP judging actually works in your favor, right? Because uh, whereas in apt emotions, if you did not frame something, the other team can just counter assert your characterization. Uh, if you're actually making reasonable persuasive arguments here uh, and reasonable persuasive framing and characterization, uh, your judge is just kind of like more likely to buy it and the other team can't just counter assert and then your judge just says, oops, it's a wash on the flow, right? Like uh, if your framing characterization is actually strong and intuitive. So um, people who are good case writers, people who can see where there are argumentative tricks maybe or uh, burdens that they can kind of fill for themselves really easily just from the framing. Um, people who are good at that, I think are just like naturally going to be good at giving first, speech, first speeches in BP, so long as they remember that the things that they take for granted off time in POCs, uh, they just build into here, right? Like if you just ask yourself, if I were running this motion as a case, what would I caveat to make the case almost tight? And then just like explain why those things you would caveat are true. And that's like a very easy, like shortcut into figuring out how to do good framing and good characterization. So that's the first kind of like trick. And I think this also applies to app emotions as well. Uh, the second is um, what I was mentioning earlier, which is that like you are good at line by line because the format you have done has forced you to. And BP is a format that is increasingly uh, more technical and cares about those kinds of responses. I've talked to a lot of judges who are like pretty frustrated by teams who just like uh, don't really engage with the other team, but just try to frame them out and then run their own arguments and weigh them. Uh, oftentimes direct rebuttal and just like crushing the other team's most important warrants is something that activators I also think are uniquely good at. Um, I think activators can sometimes tend to do too much of this and respond to everything. But at least that skill of like being able to identify how an argument is structured and what it needs to be proven and then just like annihilate it with like 
four responses for all of you natural LOs out there who give very fast techie app to LOs. Uh, those skills come in super handy here. And I think will differentiate you from a lot of teams who just kind of like run their own arguments in a vacuum and are loath to engage. This is kind of where uh, you, you can shine more. A lot of teams probably are less prepared to handle uh, just kind of that uh, almost like spamming of like flipping uh, or turning arguments and like beating arguments at the word level. Cool. Uh, closing half, uh, I think a way to approach this is if you were someone who was judged a lot of APTA, like I said earlier, and you were like, man, like I guess Gov won, but like they kind of almost won by default. Here's like a bunch of things they could have done better. Arguments I think would have been better. The things that you like don't want to say in your OA or RFD unless they ask for feedback, but like are in the back of your head where you're just like, why, why didn't you do all these things? You didn't prove any of this. Um, that that skill of being able to like evaluate the round uh, on the flow, the kind of like um, just that judging skill, I think does come in really handy here for closing half because it's basically like you just watch uh, like truncated after round and then you have to point out, you know, what's something that the team could have done better? Well, why is that so important to what the team is trying to prove and how are you able to do that better? I think uh, for people who've done a lot of APTA, I think this is like a, a good way to approach it. I think closing half can almost seem uh, pretty intuit uh, sorry, uh, intimidating to debaters at first because it's like pretty foreign from APTA. Like it's just a very different skill to do like bench weighing, for example, to explain why like, you know, we're on the same side, but CG matters more than OG. Um, but I think if you kind of like go into it with this mindset, um, that can kind of make it seem a lot less intimidating, right? Because like you've seen after rounds that like, you know, teams could have just done something better on. And uh, I think that uh, that's kind of like all this is, right? Like it, it isn't like um, some like, uh, just like very unclear target of like what I need to do to have my extension count, which I think is sometimes uh, the intimidating part where it's like, you don't really know what the goalposts are. Um, but the goalposts, I think, are actually pretty clear, right? It's just, if there is something that was wrong with the other team's case, pointing out why that was important and explaining how you were able to do that is really all you need to do here. Um, the second thing is, I think, like, uh, you know, APTA, though it, it, with prep, this has become less of a stressed skill in APTA, but still, I think there is a degree of kind of uh, on-the-fly argumentation that APTA teaches, uh, and I think for closing half, especially uh, that kind of creativity that you have from, you know, making arguments that, you know, in, in a world without the reasonability standard, a lot of teams kind of just uh, are more able to be creative, I think, when you come from APTA. Uh, you're less kind of like boxed in by the really stock arguments that uh, kind of are the same arguments that people in BP are always running. I think oftentimes you can see something a little more out there creative uh, when you have kind of practiced that skill from APTA. So uh, I'd invite you on closing to think of, you know, uh, this is kind of where you can be, you, you have a little more leeway in terms of running that stuff that might seem a little kind of like out there to your initial judge. Yeah. All right. So that was the lecture. Um, you can also always contact me on Facebook if you have any questions. I'm always trying to get more people from APTA to try BP. I think it's really, really useful and also just a lot of fun.